13 minutes past. Am I on? I can't hear myself. What's happened? Has something gone wrong? Don't want to keep repeating it, do I? It's embarrassing after a while. Do you think, do you think I've gone mental? No, <laughs> I think I've gone completely mad. Anyway, I was going to say... <laughs> I was going to say, this is no good when you get a guess. Anyway, I'll, I'll skip the intro and just Mark Hadlow's with us. <laughs> Lovely to see you. That's fantastic. You ever had I that happen it. when you're, you're, you're literally it. you can't hear yourself? Yep. And you're Terrible. thinking to yourself, yep. I'm off here, this isn't working, but I am on air, but now. But you didn't anyway. say anything bad, which is great. That's the good thing. That's the good thing. That's the you good know? thing. Anyway, listen, what, what, what I would have led to originally, in fact, last time we talked, you were at the premiere of The Hobbit. Correct. Do you yep. remember that? God. It was extraordinary. Wasn't no, it? I remember remember the interview, not the the movie. Of course, you no, remember. No, no, I movie. meant the actual the premiere it was extraordinary. <laughs> no, Hundred and six thousand yeah. people in Wellington. Fantastic. Oh, eh? Wellington population almost. Yeah. Well, it was. It felt like it. How do you get through that? Because um, it, is it all done? Is everything finished on that three? Well, we, well, we've just got some ADR to do, and I say we. I think you know the the, the people who've got dialogue. I, I, it's good to know that if you are doing ADR, you might be in the film, which is really exciting. That's good. Um, um, but we're all filmed. We're all done. I think there's some mocap being done. And um, so, how how long did that last? From where to go? Uh, for me, two years. Jeez. Two years. That's um, amazing. And, oh, it was it was the experience of a lifetime. Really? Oh, God, yeah. And do you hope that things come out of that once you've been in front of a Jackson and Hollywood and big budget and all of that, that somebody somewhere saw that and went, oh, yeah, here we go? Well, you hope so, but I don't think I ever had any expectation of that because I'm covered in hair and I look like a fatty boomba and, you know, um, you know a dwarf fatty boomba. So, you know, you, you, you hope that you're not... You say, oh, I want that one there. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. But, um, but you know, it's an experience. It's a challenge and it's a learning experience. So hopefully that leads on to other things. I mean, I've got a couple of things in the pipeline already, which Good. is great. A film coming up in New Zealand. And um, there's been a film that's been sort of in... Uh, in Canada, which is great, but it's they've lost their finance twice. It's the same uh, world dear. over, mate. Everyone. Knows. I was going to say because what has Jackson done to the film? All this talk you hear about Jackson and the money he's brought into the country and the government and the subsidies and all—is all of that real and it works and it's you know well, things I, are going well? And I mean, the only way I can I can sort of justify that is say, look, there were six of us in from New Zealand who were playing sort of like supporting supporting roles, huh. but there were three and a half thousand people working on the movie. Um, for and mostly of that, probably for two years. Wow. So if you think about that from the perspective of the profession, both crew, cast, um, administration, all the other associated um, 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 industries with it, that's a huge amount of people so yeah. who, who are in a job for two years, and that's what it's about. Yeah, that's true. Job where, do you, where do you stand on subsidising and whether, whether we should subsidise your industry in general? You know, I don't know. It's a hard question to answer because there are people, you know, the, the, the economy across the country is, you know, there are people who have hardly got anything. We've still got, and dare I say it again, there are people who are dealing with earthquake circumstances still in Christchurch. So it's quite difficult. But I think from the perspective of the profession, um, if you've got talent and if you're pretty good at it, it's great to be involved in anything. And, and, and if it is subsidised... I think it's fantastic. I, I think arts, especially like theatre, dance, music, all those things that are intrinsically New Zealand and have a New Zealand profession associated with it should be um, subsidised right. without a doubt. So I think if you're making a big film, if you're making any film which involves um, the employment of New Zealanders or et cetera, et cetera, um, I think subsidies is... is, is it, well, it's the only way we can do it because we don't have the population base. Well, having said that, though, your play... Mm. Which I didn't quite get the intro on uh, out, but but it, but it, but it's about the mammal, and the mammal is the what? It's the middle-aged man in yeah. lycra, and so it's a recognised international phenomenon. Correct. And it's been turned. You've turned it into a one-man play. Yeah, correct. Or okay. uh, well, Greg Cooper has. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you don't have funding for it. No. So you we missed out on funding actually. So so how? What happened? Well, there? we applied for funding, but um, um, I don't know the the people who are in charge of giving out funding. And this is not a criticism because you can't bite the hand that feeds you. No. Um, there's only a certain little amount of, of little trickle of money that comes out of Creative New Zealand. Um, um, and um, that went to another production. So good luck to them. Um, but, you know, so we've actually had to go around begging and stealing and borrowing. We've had some sponsors come forward, which we've been so grateful for. Um, you know, even my gym sponsorship to get me fit for this thing has been extraordinary. Um, uh, but also so many people helping. We've got a business manager who's looking after us, who's 
um, just the, the extraordinary working for nothing at the moment. You yeah. know, it's extraordinary. And so Greg's you don't know whether this is going to make money. No, no idea. We've sold some tickets, and the uh, you know Auckland Live of who have, who are backing the production to go in there. Yep. You know, they're, they're they're underwriting it, I guess, from the start. Um, but you know, there's no there's no there's no funding. There's no rehearsal for Greg and I've been working now for well, Greg's been writing writing the fifth draft for two years. We had some money that came from um, um, our business manager to to help him write it. Um, but we've been working on this for seven weeks and hello, no income. Flip side could be it could be an international smash hit. God, Next I time I talk to you, you'll be a multi-millionaire Michael, ringing I in from Monaco. Yes, it would be. Wouldn't it be yeah. fantastic? But it's I'm a... going to keep this in reality base and just okay. hopefully it'll go off. I hope New Zealanders really enjoy it. It's a good show. It's it sounds show. Good. It sounds good. So it's a one man, and, and of course you're famous for the sensitive new age guy thing, which was, am I, I mean, that was a hit, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We, I did um, something like, I think we worked out something like 68,000 people saw it. Jeez. Something like, no, uh, yeah, something like that. And we did 350 shows and... I mean, extraordinary. I mean, when you play in a, a one-man show and you play in a big theatre of 2,000 people, which I did about, well, probably about six or seven times, you, you, you suddenly get the idea of, wow, this is a one-man show that's yeah, playing yeah. in a big venue. Yeah. I mean, one-man shows are 200 tops plays, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but this is, this is an extraordinary piece. So you think this, this is up there with that? I think it's possibly a, a, because really? of the way socially we've moved on. It's 20 years later. How we are, men are a little bit more aware. There's the the pelotons and there's the, the the Tour de France's and all this sort of thing. But I think the the mental health the um, of men and how women are fascinated with us as as a species, Michael. As you are know, they? Sure. Yeah, I think okay. so. No, no, I don't so, think so, so. So so you, so so the inference here is that by being a middle-aged man wrapped in lycra and being out on your cycle, you're out there with your mates in in your group. And, and it's not about being fit, it's about being together and bonding and chatting and exchanging yeah. ideas. Well, I, and when I was doing The Hobbit, there was about seven or eight of us who went riding about six or seven times over that period of time. I did most of it on my own all the time. Mm. But the conversations and the topics of conversations were extraordinary. The health, um, business. Really? Oh, yeah. No, well, no, no, because, it's it's because, you, because you're out there cycling with thespians who are a bit more in touch with themselves than your average bloke. Because one of the great debates is that your average bloke doesn't want to talk about his health or, oh, or no, personal it was, it was quite the opposite. And I wasn't with thespians when I was... Oh, uh, really? No, these were these were architects, doctors... Seriously? Um, um, uh, builders. It's a good sign, I suppose, isn't it's it? It's a fantastic sign, and that's what really got me interested. And, and you know, the lycra, which has become a sort of a bit of a... Um, um, you actually have to wear it on the bike because you end up with chafe and... and don't, don't, you're, you're, and talk, you're talking to virtually a professional cyclist. I love it. What about Jack Bauer? Oh. oh, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Does that just not want to make you heart? Well, you see, yeah, I thought about that because I, I, I don't want to come across as heartless. But at, <laughs> How could you ever be but, that? But, but, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, you either win it or you don't, you know? Well, you're true. either fast enough or you yeah, aren't, yeah, and yeah. he wasn't. But he you was knackered, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Oh, he was. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's the great thing in life. You don't want to be left wondering, do you? No, you don't. And he you won't don't. be. No, he he no. can't possibly have thought he had any more to give. But he left it on the road, didn't he? He left it on oh, the road. That's exactly I, right. You know. So here we are, a couple of middle-aged cyclists, yep. Mark. You yep. know. I'm looking forward to going out with her for a ride. Well, with well, see, that's what I was coming to. I don't ride with other people. Because well, neither I'm, do I. I would be, I'm, I'm really only out there because I want to be, you know, not fat and bit fit. Yeah, it's well, we should do that. Why don't you and I just once go out and ride? And do what? Not talk to each and other? And not talk to each other. Because I, 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 I don't like that conversation when you're going up a hill and you go, anyway, well, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I mean, and why are you, you doing that? Would you shut up? I'm exactly. just trying to go up the hill. Precisely. <laughs> oh, my God. And then it's that, I, you know, after two hours, when you get to that stage, when you get that slight cramping in your ass, excuse me, am I allowed to say that on the radio? <laughs> Probably not. You know, and you can feel it. And you stand up and you go, oh, the relief of yes. mafficking. And then you sit down again yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like it's like you sit on an anvil, oh! Uh, but it's it's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, uh, I have that pain every day. Yeah. That, that thing. I've never talked about it on the radio before, but see, see, look what's happened to us already. <laughs> yes. So go, anyway, so you got ten characters and a bike, and it's it's it, it sound it does sound brilliant. It sounds it, it, genuinely look, clever. I have to say this, and, and um, the writer Gregory Cooker, who's, who's yeah. directing me as well, it must be a nightmare for him mm. because he's directing me. 
um, who is, you know... Not undirectable. Uh, undirect, well, no, I'm not undirectable, but well, Colin McCole or, or Raymond Hawthorne might have something to say mm. about that. But, but um, he's doing the most amazing job. And he's come. And the, we were doing the lighting last night. It's fantastic. And playing 10... I've just got to keep up with it. There's 10 characters and, you know, who am I next? I have to receive psychological help at the end of this, I'm What's sure. Wrong? There's nothing wrong with that. We've all had psychological help, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. You too, Mark. Good luck with it. Mark Thank Hadlow, you. it is 8.23. <laughs>